Merci à, à Simone pour cette euh, présentation très complexe. Merci à la, à la régie pour euh, les, les efforts. On y est arrivé. Il y a maintenant la, la vidéo à lancer, s'il vous plaît, donc de euh, Sarah Kenderdine, qui ne peut donc pas être avec nous parce qu'elle inaugure une exposition à Hong Kong. Et après euh, cet extrait vidéo, on passera donc à la, à la table ronde. Donc, euh, place à la, à la vidéo. Merci. Good afternoon and greetings to my fellow panelists and listeners. My name is Sarah Kenderdine and I'm a professor here at EPFL, leading the Laboratory for Experimental Museology. And apologies that I couldn't be with you today. I'm currently in Hong Kong for the launch of the new National Palace Museum, in which we have a series of digital exhibits premiering later this week. This short presentation focuses, of course, on the theme of this panel, the future of museums, and it does so by examining the curatorial framing of the exhibition Deep Fakes, Art and Its Double. But to set the stage for a new kind of museology, let's step back into the recent past when the CEO of Intel, Brian Krasnick, declared in 2014 We're in the midst of a transformation from a world of screens and devices to a world of immersive experiences. What we really know through art history, the history of science and more recently media archaeology is that what he was really observing was hundreds of years of development in these technologically enabled prosthetic architectures of the senses. From the Kaiser panorama to the sensorama, the emergence of immersive environments has sublimate, uh, coincided with the sublimation of curatorial praxis inside machines and represented the greatest challenge to the passive viewer since the invention of the roller coaster. For the last 20 odd years, I've been designing interactive frameworks for public engagement with cultural heritage. This was initially located at Museum Victoria, where we started to build these large scale systems and experiences for mass public. I then started to work with universities to help sustain this kind of research and its infrastructure throughout the galleries, libraries, archives and museum sector. I then co-established the Applied Laboratory for Interactive Visualization and Embodiment at the Hong Kong Science Park in Hong Kong. Uh, and then returned to Australia to build the Expanded Perception and Interaction Centre at the University of New South Wales. What you're looking at here on the right-hand side uh, of your screen is a small seven-meter diameter panorama. It's comprised of 56 projectors and a 29 computer cluster uh, at 120 million pixels in 3D. It's at the edge of human visual acuity and was designed to solve visualization problems for complexity in big data in the humanities and the sciences. Now located at EPFL, uh, at the Laboratory for uh, Experimental Museology, with 12 large-scale systems that offer us strategies for multi-sensory engagement, emphasizing human-to-human -human as well as human-to-machine interaction and giving us powerful ways to reformulate narrative in a digital context. Our research lies at the intersection of immersive visualization, digital aesthetics and cultural big data. M plus engages in research from scientific, artistic and humanistic perspectives and promotes post-cinematic multi-sensory engagement using these experimental platforms. The future of museums harnesses technologies that have unprecedented abilities to capture the world around us. Lasers scanning, for example, collects billions of points to represent places such as these heads at Mount Rushmore, scanned by the Scottish Ten. We can create precious objects in 3D and peer inside to see what was previously unseen. We can capture art in a way that allows us to zoom into the tiniest brushstroke and reveal more than the naked eye can see. Advances in machine learning are also an emerging trend in our research. We recently installed the photogrammetric model of Nefertari's tomb 
collected in only eight hours of photography in which machine learning is used to create a model of billions of points. This model is then transferred to our 360 3D environment at 40 million pixels as one of the world's first demonstrators of Unreal Engine's end display technology. It's synchronized across a powerful 11 PC graphics cluster. We're also capturing intangible heritage and reenactment performance through various forms of motion capture, motion over time analytics, and developing motion ontologies. With that brief backdrop, we return to the exhibition Deepfakes Art in its Double. Curated for the EPFL pavilions in September last year, following on from the intense period of COVID-19 in which many cultural organizations were prompted to re-examine their abilities to meet the demands of society. They were confronted by the broad issues of representation and inclusiveness. Digital was also brought starkly to the fore as one possible solution to numerous issues of access. In response to this situation, the exhibition Deepfakes Art in its Double was designed to pose crucial questions about the potency of digital replicas to absorb audiences in enduring emotional encounters with universal art treasures. The show was designed for both pavilions A and B of this seminal Kango Kuma building Known formerly as Art Lab and now as EPFL Pavilions, its mission is to act as an amplifier for art and science in society. In participation with diverse communities, its exhibitions blend experimental curatorship and contemporary aesthetics with open science, digital humanism and emerging technologies. The exhibition took the provocative title Deepfakes, yet it opposes the popular usage of deepfakes for manipulation and misinformation to explore very different perspectives, reimagining objects through advanced computational techniques. What follows here are a series of photographs of the exhibition, and I will explore some of its curatorial themes. Decades of computer science and engineering have revolutionized the tenets of verisimilitude and representation. Today's perfect pixels coalesce in imaging techniques designed to replicate cultural artifacts with ultimate fidelity. Simultaneously as algorithms and computer vision re-perform and reprocess the digitally visible, they are exposing the optical unconscious of art, calling us to re-examine once again objecthood itself. Remediated through participatory interfaces such as mixed, augmented and virtual realities, Deepfake's art and its double creates a new performative platform for the complex archetypes that emerge out of computational practices as they intersect with art heritage. Through 21 installations across both pavilions, the exhibition is equally focused on affirming and activating visitors' sensory experiences, while also grappling with the critical implications of digital materialities that objects possess in post-original form. Cultural deepfakes have manifold significance. They're technologically empowered to offer forensic insights into invisible dimensions, generating unforeseen hypotheses and connections. These art science phenomena also propagate powerful auras which rise to the surface entangled with the effective qualities of the originating sources. Such augmented replicas are able to draw us into unparalleled tactility with the textures, patinas and geometries of their counterparts. With its propensity for peripheral vision, Machine learning has also amplified the possible futures for curatorial and artistic practices, antagonizing outdated notions of authority, authenticity and access. These practices are generating perpetually new archival entities, concurrently formed and formless. 
Digital facsimiles also decolonize matter as they defy hegemonic narratives, helping to liberate things from their colonial entrapments, confronting authoritative discourses, historical sedimentation and contested social relations. In cases of heritage at risk due to warfare, iconoclasm and climatic catastrophe, digital copies have enabled communities to become more resilient to loss. They can also provide reservoirs for cultural memory and instruments for those on the margins to speak back to their oppressors. Vital issues for cultural deep fakes include the encryption of digital counterparts in place of originals, exploding systems and codes of ownership, custodianship and repatriation. Meanwhile, the accumulation and exploitation of digital patrimonial and cultural capital by technological elites unnervingly reenacts colonial constructs. Synchronously, new forms of cryptographic control, such as non-fungible tokens, are being enabled for the network circulation of art. Promoting the blockchain as a potential dominion of arbitrary value is the hallmark of the intensification of late capitalism's newest investment for its enmeshed cultural objects, rather than their depropriation in the commons. Deepfake's art in its double has a cumulative narrative that embarks on these cross-cutting themes, traversing the simulacrum mirror world's digital twins, cryptocurrency and machine intelligence, while engaging with the issues of mimesis, reenactment, memory and decolonization. The exhibition's installations cycle us through some of the antitheses around which the history of art has been circumscribed. As postmodernism recedes, taking with it the assumed meaning of things, cultural deepfakes have become a central pivot for this dialectic. Recognizing the importance of cultural deepfakes opens the way to redefine the dominant technocultural logic of our contemporary era. The 21 installations in Deepfakes Art and Its Double represent seminal objects of Pan Asian art and architecture from China, Cambodia, in India, Malaysia, Japan. Sri Lanka and Thailand. The Middle East and North Africa are represented by important sites in Egypt, Syria and the Sudan. The United States of America and significant European heritage sites in Armenia, Germany and Italy complete an encyclopedic offering made tangible through state-of-the-art imaging and interfaces that support interactive immersion. Deepfake's Art and Its Double was extended until May and recently closed at EPFL pavilions. Over a thousand visitors responded to the digital evaluation of the exhibition through a survey tool called Muse, where they were asked 29 questions about their experience. The results are currently being analysed and these will be the partial focus of an upcoming book, Deepfake's a critical lexicon of digital museology to be published by Routledge in 2023. Thank you very much and best wishes for the panel. Vous pouvez prendre une bouteille d'eau, madame, si vous voulez. On va se mettre, je vais mettre à la première place pour prendre une bouteille d'eau.